I'm in Southeast Michigan. We're growing figs, we're growing bananas. I have a cottonwood tree growing in my garden that was one foot tall, and now it's almost 12 feet tall. This has been a really rough year for a lot of gardeners, but I have a different issue. I have too much growth. I can barely walk through here. Pretty much everywhere you step in here, you can find food. Everything is intentional or a useful volunteer plant that I like grow. So I think this is a good time to do another garden walk video since, as you can see, the growth has really exploded with the warmer weather. It's just about August right now. And we've got a lot going on right now. Today we're gonna to be focusing on some garden anomalies. Stuff that's growing a little too good. And for anybody that is discouraged because you're not doing too good this year, I want you to see what we have going on here. And hopefully you'll like and subscribe to this channel because I have a lot of videos showing you how I grow like this. So my garden could be classified as a no-till permaculture system. It can be divided into two separate parts. On this side here, I have most of my annuals growing. I have timber as borders. I use compost made from the chicken composting system and compost I make myself to fill these areas. And we also utilize chop and drop to fertilize plants while they're growing. And I know a lot of people like raised beds. I do have a raised bed here. And I have one over here that I built out of some scrap timber from chopping firewood. And a couple weeks ago, this was not doing pretty good. But as you can see now, everything here is growing great. Make sure you subscribe, go check out that video on how I fixed yellowing plants. My latest comfrey video, we planted some half inch to one inch long root clippings in here. You can see they are doing pretty good right now around this plum tree which grew way too big we pruned this earlier in the year in a video and it put on about eight or nine feet of growth so i cut it back half so it's starting to split a little bit here but it was just getting a little too top heavy besides a couple beets i didn't plant anything in here this is all volunteers nasturtiums tomatoes some of the beets I planted are ready for harvest in here. We have a lot of borage. And even though it's August, the peas will not give up. It's been in the 90s. They're flopped over. The plants are dying and we are still getting new peas on here. We've got some really high intensity planting going on here. We have some sweet peppers. I didn't label these. I don't know what kind they are. I'm going to have to go back after they ripen and figure it out. Over here we have some of the chocolate beauty bell peppers. We got a lot of big peppers on these plants here. Lots of different kinds of tomatoes growing through here. A lot of them are becoming ripe. I threw some marigold seeds in here and we have the ground cherries, one of my favorites. If you're not growing these, I highly recommend that you do it. So I can come through here, eat a bunch of tomatoes, bunch of ground cherries. I've never had eggplant till last year, but I'm a huge fan now. So I have a bunch of eggplants along here as well, growing right underneath these tomatoes. Earlier in the season, I showed you how I was using garlic spray on all my cabbage, my kales, but I'm not doing that anymore. These plants get kind of bitter this time of year, so we're not really harvesting them. I'll chop some of it off for the chickens, but I'm keeping the plants alive for the fall season because in the fall, we will come in here and we will start harvesting these kales. Here's a nice little guild I had last year with the sage, which has spread really wide along here. My artichokes did not make it through the winter because I didn't do a good job of covering them. But even without vernalization, we have artichokes growing. And then this guy here, this is a weed. It's a native weed, it's called burnweed. I just thought it looked kind of cool growing. Now that it's about the flower, it doesn't look as great. So I'm probably gonna chop it down and compost it. But what it's doing now, it's shading the soil. So no more weeds can grow underneath here. So it's doing a decent job. All the cover crops. We did not plant anything here this year. I got some pawpaw seeds down here. I don't see anything coming up. We're gonna wait on those a little bit. But here's all our cover crops of some hairy vetch. We got some 
Daikon radish. We're always forward thinking these beds got overrun with weeds, so planting these cover crops here, we'll be able to chop these down, cover them with some more cardboard, throw some compost on them, maybe add some more borders here and some more wood chips, and next year we'll have a great planting area. The latest video is a video I made about crossing a black beauty tomato with a cherry bomb F1 hybrid, so we have some of these. And I do have to say, this is gonna be one of the best tomatoes that I've ever tasted. I do still have some of the ever-bearing strawberries producing in here. I've got a couple ripe ones that I can eat. And they slowed down, but being able to eat strawberries in August, that's pretty cool. We're still waiting on some of the hot peppers to start getting ripe, but we did plant some fall plantings after harvesting garlic. These beans are one week old only. I sowed these last week. Look how big they are. They're like eight inches tall. We threw a lot of beets in here. Some are bigger than the rest. We're going to let this just grow in here. This is going to fill up with beets and later in the fall we'll come back in here and have three different varieties of beets with the volunteer tomato plant from the Cherry Bomb F1 Hybrid. So it's a plum tomato not growing true to seed. Just filling this area in, just letting it do its thing. We're going to go back here to the Back to Eden perennial area because everything is just going a little crazy back here. The currants are done for the season, but look at these sunchokes. These sunchokes are approaching 12 feet tall just in this little area. Got these off eBay. And then here we have some incredible growth on a Concord seedless grape. So last year this plant was about that tall and then it grew to about here and here's where I chopped it. Well check out what we got going on here. We got growth 10 feet this way, growth 10 feet that way and a bunch of suckers coming out and we even have some grapes growing on there. That was not the plan to have grapes growing on there, but we'll take it. Then we have more grapes and just look at this comfrey. We got comfrey that is growing crazy. I have to chop this comfrey down. And strawberries for days going through here. 75 bear root to start. Now we have thousands. They're out of control. I chopped the runners off. It doesn't matter. They keep sending them out. They're trying to take over this whole area. I don't want them to do it. And we added some new herbs here by the tarragon, which has grown immensely. These plants were six inches tall when I planted them last year. Now they're about four to five feet tall. Down here we have some lovage. Little tiny lovage plants I put in here. I have a feeling that next year these are going to grow and they're probably going to be six or seven feet tall. I'm going to have a video coming up about these walking onions. I bought these off eBay. It is time to start cracking these bulbs off the walking onions and we're going to expand them a little bit further out this way and I might start a new patch. I haven't harvested these yet. I haven't done anything with them but if I get more we're going to start selling them. We're going to start eating them. This is what I mean. We have an apple tree in here. It's just engulfed with comfrey. We gotta start chopping this down. And this is wild right here. Check out this grapevine. This is just one plant. Same as the other one. I had one shoot coming up. I chopped it about right there. And instead of sending like one each direction, it decided to send out like dozens all over the place. So that's a little crazy. But we're going to take care of that in the springtime. Chocolate mint from eBay, just growing all over the place. Pond's doing pretty good, lots of frogs in there. You can see what I mean here. This is just plants on top of plants. Here's what I have left of my walking path right there. And look what my raspberries are doing. They're out of control. These are all new suckers that shot up here. These are everbearing, so I could chop them all the way down to the ground. Some of the plants I chopped halfway so I can get an early harvest. That was halfway decent. I think next year I'm going to chop them to the ground, but they're starting to make their way into the asparagus and we don't want that. This area by in here, I have not tamed yet. I got some boards down here trying to kill off some weeds. I got a little comfrey planted. 
Bradford pear popped up on its own. I'm going to graft some edible pears onto that. And then we have the hydrangea I bought from Home Depot that is kind of through in there. The thing is thriving. This is what I mean with these strawberries here. There's the end of the patch and you can see all these runners coming out here. I'm gonna have to come out here with some snips and start chopping these out. And I weeded the asparagus, but mother nature had a different plan and we have all kinds of plants growing in here. Some of them are cover crops. You can see some of the hairy vetch popping up in here. So those, they're all gonna get folded down. I'm gonna throw some cardboard and some wood chips in here. We're gonna try to reclaim this asparagus patch, but I'm just glad that we got a lot of green growth in here to feed back into these crowns because they've been struggling the past couple of years because of all these weeds. And we're back to some areas that need a little extra work. This is gonna be the winter project. We got some geraniums in here with some clovers mixed in. We're gonna have to weed through this so it's just the geraniums left. Here's all the beds with the cover crops. Put a lot of cardboard down here. We had a lot of thistles, a lot of quack grass. We we're trying to kill it off. No matter what you do, they are gonna come through. But we'll come back with some more cardboard, bunch of wood chips, put it in here, and we are going to reclaim this area. Everything you see here is stuff that I allowed to grow. We got all this evening primrose. We use that to deter the Japanese beetles. This area is getting a little thick to walk through. We're gonna have to come through here. And I come through here about once a week or so and fill a 35 gallon garbage can full of weeds, prunings from different plants I'm growing and it all goes back to the chickens and the chickens turn into compost and it returns to the garden. Here's a bunch of plants that I am growing just in my lawn. I have not amended this in any way. I have tomatoes growing like crazy. We got a lot of squashes coming in on here. Fruit trees that were once dead with leaf curl. We used garlic, we fixed that. We have the Atlantic giant pumpkins growing in here. We're burying the stems. We're trying to grow some giant pumpkins in here. We got some new cherry trees planted. This guy's looking pretty big right now. Trees so top heavy, they fall over and I have to tie them off. Just tomatoes growing out of some cardboard back here. I'm just one person trying to manage all this growth, making sure I'm always planting new things because the goal out here is to have consistent harvest throughout the season, whether it's spring, summer, fall, you always wanna be able to come out to your garden and find something to eat. And cater your garden to your needs. I'm the type of person that likes to come out here and just eat things, just graze like an animal. Then sometimes I just like to try growing things that they say you can't grow here in zone 5B, like figs or bananas. So if you are a conventional gardener, now might be the time to stop that and start growing like this. Sure, the setup's a little bit of work, but you don't have to till, you don't have to fertilize, you don't have to water. Your only problem's gonna be that things grow too fast, which is a good problem to have. In another month or so, this is going to be even more overgrown, so make sure you stay tuned. We'll do at least one more garden walk before the season ends. Thanks for watching.